Hi, boys and girls, men and women of all walks of life and ages. Welcome to the garage again. We're on the right side, which is the guitar building station, as opposed to last time we were over on the other side, where the serious amplification things are. All right, then. So today, I'm going to do an unboxing. And I have to apologize to my few followers I have, followers I have, because I haven't made a video in quite a while. I've been so busy um, with this house moving deal we're doing. What we're doing is my mom-in-law moved in with us and she lived on the other side of the hill and we're taking stuff from her house, putting it at our house and from our house to her house and here's a lot of stuff, folks. So anyways, uh, I've been real busy doing that. Plus, uh, a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, I've got this gig I gotta do and I'm flying in from Florida to do it and half my band can't play can you sit in and I'll tell you what I haven't played live in many many years at least 13 or 14 maybe 15 years so um, I've been practicing that and it's mostly music that I never knew uh, it's a lot of it's kind of like Steely Dan he writes he writes a lot of music and it's really good music but those guys I never played any of their music when I played in bands. I either played original stuff or I played just mainstream 80s and 90s stuff. And then I was in a blues band, blues rock band, I guess you'd call it. So that's the kind of stuff I was doing. I wasn't playing, you know, F major seventh minor six with a flatted second. You know, I just don't know those chords. And I'm just too dang old and to learn them in a couple of days. So hopefully he's gonna carry all that because a keyboard player can't show up. Steely Dan without a keyboard, uh-oh. And this really good, you know, schooled, you know, a graduate of some kind of guitar school, guitarist, he ain't going to be there either. So they're stuck with me. Anyways, you're wondering why I'm turning blue. I'm not. It's this guitar I want to show you today is all raw wood. There's no um, uh, stuff at all, you know, because a lot of it comes with this, a covering on it to just kind of, you know, a sealer, shall we say. And uh, so... You know, this doesn't have it, and since I'm going to for sure stain this, I don't want to leave a bunch of greasy, you know, fingerprints on it that I'm going to have to try to get out. So, let's get to the unboxing. First, let's look at the dang box. This came to me from a, from a warehouse in Walnut, California. So, I think we all know where it probably came from to start out with. You know, it was either one of the big three people that make all these guitar kits. They all come from the East somewhere. We're not going to name names. We're not going to call names. Okay, let's go. So look at this box, first of all. Check it out. Look at that. This thing, it looked like they played hopscotch on it. Do we remember hopscotch? Look at that. So I was scared to death when I first got this. And I was saying prayers before I opened it up. I'm just going, oh no, what's, good? what's this going to look like? This is a PRS copy, kit guitar. It has a flame maple top. It has a glue in neck. It also has a strap style uh, uh, tailpiece on it, which I, I looked at a bunch of these kits and they were all stop tailpiece type uh, kits. And you know, I didn't want to have to do a weird tremolo system on it. And then I found this one. So let's take a look at it, guys. All right, here we go. So first off, is this thing gonna be all scratched and busted and dented from that? Let's take a look at it. All right, well, hey. So in all honesty, I looked at this really close after I got it and I am thrilled with the way this thing looks right now. Uh, it, the flame maple veneer is super thin. You can't even see where it is in some spots. So it's, in other words, you can't sand this. You probably couldn't even sand it with a thousand grit without sanding through it. So that's why I'm trying to be real careful with it. But let's show you how it looks. It's got a really nice flame to it. It's not super pronounced, but it's still a nice flame. Okay. Size and then the back, it's very nice too. I mean, it's very nice for staining. Anyways, it's number... 34 and we'll look at the neck in a second by the way you know I was telling you in my last video about Dan at Guns and Guitars when he was judging videos one of the things he uh, took points off for was that people didn't run background music and so the last video I did I had some background music I uh, hope you enjoyed that 
Today, uh, you are lucky. <laughs> this is music that I made way back in the 90s. I was a single guy, lived by myself. I was in a band, but I also uh, had a little funky studio in uh, my upstairs of my old house, built in 1906. Really older than me. Can you believe it? And so I would just sit up there at night and on weekends when I didn't have nothing to do and I'd just write music and record it. So what you're hearing is just all me playing all the background, all the stuff. You know, I had a, a, an Alesis SR-16, which is still sitting right over there. A great, a great little drum machine, but it is a drum machine. And they had a little cheap keyboard with a uh, Dr. Synth Boss unit that looked just like the SR-16 and uh, my guitars and uh, the keyboard and I just sat around making music. Okay, here's the net. Let's take a quick look at it. It's 24 frets, cool. I didn't expect that. Most of the kits were 22 fretters. So I was really thrilled when I found this kit. You can see it's got a, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got a scarf joint on it. It looks real solid. Don't know what it's made out of. I don't know if it's mahogany or what. It's not super heavy, but the block on the back is put on very well, and it's got the bird inlays, of course. And you know, uh, it doesn't have the relief on here, so whichever way that goes, a little crescent is gonna have to be cut into it. No big deal. So, what do you think, boys and girls? Just gonna fit? Uh, let's take a look and see. Oh man, that's nice. You know, it's it's not so tight that you, you're, I'm gonna have to, you know, sand or file anything out, and you can still get glue in there without it all pooching out all over the place. Let's take a look at it. Have it. So let's talk about what is going to happen to this guitar. Obviously, this is so nice, a guy is going to have to stain it, you know? And I, uh, you know, one of the things I've tried not to do, but I've been doing lately is say, please like, subscribe, and add me to your list, and blah, 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 and leave comments. And this is the kind of thing I'd like to see comments on because I am going to stain this. But I'm not sure what color. So, write what you think would look cool. It, you know, it, it's just all stuff for me to think about. A blue burst, green burst. Got a green guitar, but that's not really mine. It's for somebody else. Of course, my wife says it's got to be a purple burst because she's uh, a purple person. You might say that uh, she lives in a, a purple haze. Yeah, sounds kind. Of, that sounds kind of like a. A song, that'd be a good song. Purple Haze. Yeah, that sounds good. Anyways, that's me squawking away on the guitar over there. <laughs> Anyways, um, one, of the, one of the things I saw, I was watching an actual PRS video on them staining the guitar. And even though they've already done it, and I'm sure they got a bunch of them like it already out there in people's hands, but it was kind of a real dark amber, and then it was kind of a reddish brown and then brown dark on the outside and it just looks so rich it looked kind of like a tobacco sunburst but you know since these bodies are different than a strap body it really looks good so I'm kind of considering that kind of pondering that shall I say so if you've got anything to say about it leave a comment I'd love it uh, the more comments the better we'll just take a quick look at some of the stuff you know you gotta Tremolo arm with a white tip. You got a really super cool cheapo cord. And of course, it's the neck adjusting Allen wrench. Back place, I've test fitted those. They all fit really good. And we've decided that these strings are great. We love these strings now. They're not crummy anymore. <laughs> look at these pickups. Don't those look like a Seymour Duncan quarter pounder or something? Look at the magnets on those things. But of course they don't have, you know, on most pickups they have a, a row of stock magnets 
or just magnets, and then the other ones are screws so you can adjust them up and down. This is just all magnets all the time, all day long. So let's see what else we got in our little bag of tricks. Oh yeah, little fender, Stratocaster tremolo, um, a double post, no six screws, and it's got a super uh, thin, lightweight, uh, sustained block. So that may have to go. I know you can uh, replace those sometimes, but uh, it's always kind of a trick with, with kit guitars. You just never know what will work and what won't work. And like I said, I have some skills, but I'm just not a skilled enough craftsman, and I don't have all the right tools to do some of the really trick stuff people do. You know, I kind of kind of get the fret job pretty close, and I get the nut pretty close. And, uh, you know, if it comes down to it, I can always take it to a guy I know that, you know, he can fix me up for not too much money just by doing a, a final setup on it. You know, I have one guitar I use that I made that... I don't need, didn't need to take to him, but uh, another one I did. And man, anybody that's played that thing really likes the way it plays. So and I'm not tooting my horn, it's just I happen to do a good job on it. So anyways, um, that's kind of what's going on. Um, wish me luck on my gig. Uh, I don't know if it'll actually happen or not because of all this, these smoke rules. They got everybody, we're all wearing masks but getting around here. Uh, we just keep saying our prayers that these doctors and scientists and chemists get these dang, you know, vaccines out. And whether you believe in vaccines or not, you know, they're probably helpful. And we're not going to go into all the conspiracy theories about them. You know, I'll just be honest with you. I had the vaccine and there ain't nothing wrong with me. You know what I mean? I'm all still here. <laughs> Anywho... I, I know I hope you enjoy the video once again like subscribe leave a comment. What color am I gonna do this thing you guys? You got to help me. I'm just I'm helpless here So once I get this guitar finished and I finish this one I've got to stain this one and paint it and clear coat it uh, At least I think that's what's gonna, gonna happen a couple of these guitars I made I was gonna do one thing and it ended up being something different So anyways, that might be what happens with this one Let's hope not, because it's really too beautiful to paint. You know, I love metal flake paint, but I ain't metal flake in this puppy. Anyways, that's what we did today, and that's what we do. I just wanted to make this video and to let you know that I'm sorry I haven't made one in quite a while, just because I've been so dang busy. Um, there's another body over there. I mean, I got junk laying all over the place, you know, and I've got one guitar I need to take back apart, my red one, and uh, redo the electronics as one position on it is not working and it's the favorite position of all positions so kind of stuck with it you know anyways this little song here that i'm doing is a song about uh you know relationships anyhow you guys i hope you're having a blessed day keep the faith say your prayers i'll see you in the next video i'll try real hard not to uh, go so long in between okay we're going to be finishing that one next so when that one gets done we'll We'll kind of put it together, hopefully on video, and then we'll take it over there to the amp station and we'll plug it in. How about that, huh? Once again, have a blessed day. Keep the faith. See you later. Bye-bye.